Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Finding Equivalent Fractions. This is part one. Here in this lesson, the main thing I want you to remember as we jump in is that we can take a fraction and multiply it by anything we want as long as we do it to the top and to the bottom of the fraction at the same time. When we multiply a fraction like that, where we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, then we change what the fraction looks like, but we don't change the meaning of the fraction. What happens when we multiply like that is we, we find what we call an equivalent fraction. So this lesson is all going to be about finding equivalent fractions. I think it's a little easier if I just give you the first problem and we jump right in. Uh, let's take a look at the following thing. What if I tell you that the fraction 1 third is equal to some fraction with the number 6 on the bottom? And your job is to tell me what goes up here. You see, this is an equivalent fraction. Once we get the answer, like let's say the, the answer is a nine up here or two up here or six up here, whatever the answer is, once we get the answer, what we're saying is that these two things are equivalent. That's what an equal sign means. So when we say finding equivalent fractions, what it means is we're going to have an equal sign between two fractions, and then we have to provide the answer that goes into the missing blank that makes these two fractions equal. Let me say that again. We have to figure out what goes in the blank that makes them equal. We can't put anything there. We have to figure out the right thing to put there. Now, before we actually do it and, and, and do it with math, I would like to do it graphically. So this fraction is called one third, right? Because if we think about a circle and we can cut a circle into three equal pieces, that's what the denominator is. And if we only have one of those pieces, we have one third of a pizza. Now, what we're asking ourselves over here is what fraction is the same meaning and the same amount of pizza as this one, except has a six on the bottom. Well, if it has a six on the bottom, that means the pizza is divided into six. Because if you think about this, this is a circle divided into six pieces. That's what a sixth is, right? You divide a circle into six equal slices. One, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, six, sixth. So the question is, what is the correct amount of sixth that is exactly equal to this? Well, if I take one slice away, is this equal to this? Not quite. If I take another one away, is this equal to this? Not quite. If I take this one away, is this equal to this? Not quite. If I take this one, are these two equal? I think you can agree with me that these two are exactly equal. So without doing any math, we actually figured out that the answer has to be, what is the fraction here? One sixth, there's the, the second slice, two sixth. So the answer is two sixth. So what we have figured out graphically is that the fraction one third, we can find an equivalent fraction to that that has a six in the bottom. And this fraction, even though it looks different than one third, the numbers are all different, but it actually represents the same amount of stuff. Because if I have a, a pizza sliced into six equal slices, but I have two of those slices, it's exactly the same amount of food if I have a pizza divided into three pieces and I only have one slice. So you need to get used to the idea of seeing fractions with different numbers, but yet they can mean the same thing. And none of us, by the way, are going to be able to look at this and understand that they're the same, like in our mind. Not, not even me, I can't do that, okay? But what we do with the magnets here is we prove to ourselves that, that this is the case. And then also here, I want to show you how to calculate it. So let's say for a second that we didn't have this magnet at all, and we wanted to calculate the answer. One third is equal to two six. Whoops, not two six. Let's say we don't know the answer is two six, so we don't know what's on the top, like this. We know that there's a six on the bottom. So here's how you solve this problem. Remember, every fraction, in this case the one third, you can multiply it by any number you want as long as you do it to the top and to the bottom. But we know that if these are equal, what, how do I make this into a six? I can multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by anything I want. If I multiply by two down here, two times three is six. But if I multiply by two here, then I also must multiply the top of the fraction by two in order to keep the fraction balanced. In order to keep it balanced and so that it means the same thing, we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. So let's say for a second, we take the one third and we say, all right, I'm gonna multiply the bottom by two. And then because to keep it balanced, I have to multiply the top by two. Then on the top, one times two is two. And on the bottom, three times two is six. And so the answer to the problem is 2 6, which we already figured out just by using magnets. But on a test, you're not going to have magnets. You're not going to be able to do it like that. So we have to use our math. So all you have to do is say, 
Well, these two things are the same. I can multiply this fraction by anything I want, and I know the bottom number has to be a 6, so I have to multiply the bottom by 2, and because I'm multiplying the bottom by 2, I must also multiply the top by 2 in order to keep the fraction uh, equivalent. To find an equivalent fraction, you have to multiply top and bottom by the same number. So when we multiply top and bottom by 2, this is the answer that we get. All right, it's going to become, I think, a lot easier as we jump into a bunch more problems. We could talk about this forever, but ultimately, I think I want to do this problem next. All right, so the next problem is, let's say we have the fraction 4 fifths, and we're going to say that we are going to find an equivalent fraction to that that has a 10 in the denominator. What do we have to figure out the answer is to the numerator? Now, uh, we're going to use the magnets, but we're going to do it at the end. Here, what I'd like to do is solve the problem and then check that the answer is right. So what we know is we have this fraction, 4 fifths. We can multiply that fraction by any number we want, uh, as long as we do it to the top and the bottom. Then we will find a new equivalent fraction that will look different, but it'll mean the same thing. I can multiply this fraction top and bottom by 2 if I want. I can multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 6 if I want. I can multiply top and bottom of that fraction by 17 if I want. I can multiply top and bottom of the fraction by 1,000 if I want. You see, it doesn't matter what I multiply by. I'm free to do what I want, but I must multiply top and bottom by the same number in order to keep the fraction equivalent here. But notice, the new denominator is a 10. So what I'm really going to do is I'm going to take this 4 fifths, and I know that now I need to multiply by 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom. Why do I know that? Because this denominator is 10. I'm trying to find an equivalent fraction that has a 10 in the bottom. So I must multiply this by 2 to get 10. And then, of course, I have to multiply the top as well. So the bottom is 5 times 2 is 10, and the top is 4 times 2 is 8. And so the answer is 8 tenths. Now, I don't know about you, but I cannot look at the fraction 8 tenths and know that it's the same as 4 fifths. I just don't know that in, in you know off the top of my head. I don't know that. But we can show ourselves that it's the case. Let's take a look at the fraction 4 fifths. Here's 1 fifth, here's 2 fifths, here's 3 fifths, here's 4 fifths. Of course, if we had 5 fifths, it would be the whole circle, the whole entire thing. But here we have actually 4 fifths right here. That's this fraction. And we're saying that the equivalent fraction to that is 8 tenths. So here is a smaller slice, because the pizza is now cut into 10 pieces. 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, uh, here's 5 tenths, here's 6 tenths, here's 7 tenths, and here's 8 tenths. Now, it's kind of hard to prove exactly, but I think if you squint long enough, you can realize that these are exactly the same. Maybe I rotate it like this. These are the same as this. If I, put, if I pick this up and put it over here, this covers those, this one covers those two, this one covers those two, and then this one covers those two. So these are exactly the same. Now again, on a test, you're not going to have magnets to do this, so you can't use tools to help you. We have to know how to do it with math. Multiply the top and bottom by two in this example to get us to the final answer. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's say we have the number two equals something over three. Now, this one looks completely different, actually, than, uh, than before, because we have the number 2 here. And, you know, 2 doesn't really look like a fraction. Look at the other problems. I gave you a fraction is equal to something over 6. A fraction is equal to something over 10. But here, I gave you something weird. I gave you 2. But if you think about and remember what we learned about fractions in the very beginning, any whole number fraction, you can write it as that number over 1. So this 2, I'm going to rewrite the problem, and I'm going to say that really what it is, is 2 over 1 is equal to something over 3. How do I know to do that? Because remember, fractions are the same as division, right? 2 over 1 is the same as 2 divided by 1. And you know that 2 divided by 1 is 2. So any whole number you ever see, you can always write it as a fraction over 1. If I give you the whole number, you know, 105, you could just write it as 105 over 1. If I give you 88 as a whole number, you could write 88 over 1. If I give you 7 as a number, you could write 7 over 1. So here, we just take this and turn it into a fraction, and now we see what to do. Because this is a fraction 2 over 1. And what I need to do is turn it into a new fraction with a 3 on the bottom. So what I'm going to have is the fraction 2 over 1. I need to turn that denominator into a 3. How do I do it? 
by multiplying the denominator by 3. So if I multiply the denominator by 3, I must also multiply the top by 3 in order to keep this thing balanced because fractions are like seesaws, they're like balances. If I multiply the top by 3, I must multiply the bottom by 3 to keep it balanced. So what do I have? 2 times 3 is 6 on the top and 1 times 3 is 3 on the bottom. So what we are saying is that the number 2 is exactly the same as the fraction 6 over 3. Because what we found over here is that this number that goes in here, I'll just kind of put it over here, it should be 6 over 3. Now let's take a minute to see if this actually makes sense. So what I'm going to do is grab my thirds. This is one third, and we can keep counting, but notice how many thirds do we have? We have six thirds. So there's one third, there's two thirds, there's three thirds, three thirds is one whole, but here's four thirds, here's five thirds, and here is six thirds. Notice what happens. Six thirds, which is what we got as our answer, is equal to two whole pizzas. So it doesn't look like it would work out, but remember, anytime you have an improper fraction where the top number is bigger, you're going to have a total number of pizzas or whatever larger than one. And so here, by having, if it were three over three, it would just be one whole pizza, but double the number of slices, six over three, means we have two whole pizzas. That's why that works out. Now up until this point, we have done the math, but we have also um, used magnets to kind of like make sure it's correct. But now we're going to drop the training wheels and solve the rest of the problems without using any pictures. And you can just kind of like take comfort in knowing that if you were to draw these all, you would show yourself graphically that they're all correct. Let's take a look at the problem, 6 sevenths, and find an equivalent fraction that has a 14 in the bottom. So what we know is we can multiply this fraction, 6 sevenths, by any number we want. Um, but we want a fraction that has a 14 in the bottom. That means I have to multiply it by a 2 on the bottom. But if I do that, I also multiply it by a 2 on the top, right? Because 7 times 2 is 14, right? So on the bottom, I'm going to get that 14 that I want. And on the top, 6 times 2 is 12. So what we have figured out is that 6 sevenths is exactly the same thing as 12 fourteenths. And if I had magnets in sevenths and fourteenths and put it all out there, we would show ourselves that that is the case. All right, let's take a look. Let's go off to the next board. Let's take a look at the problem, uh, 5 eighths. And we're going to set that equal to a new fraction with 24 on the bottom. So we have this fraction, we can of course multiply it by anything we want. So we rewrite everything and say, what do we want to multiply by? Well, we know we want a 24 on the bottom, so we have to multiply by 3 on the bottom. And then therefore we must multiply it by 3 on the top to keep it balanced. On the bottom, 8 times 3 is 24. On the top, 5 times 3 is 15. And so the answer is 15 24 And that's the final answer. All right. Moving right along, let's take a look at the fraction 3 fifths. And we're going to set it equal to or say that we have an equivalent fraction with 15 in the denominator. How do we do that? So we take our intact fraction, 3 fifths, and we can multiply top and bottom of that fraction by anything we want. But we know we need to multiply by 3. Why? Because 5 times 3 is 15. And that's what we're trying to get to. So 3 on the top. 3 times 3 is 9. And 5 times 3 is 15. So the answer is that 3 fifths of a pizza is exactly the amount of, same amount of pizza as 9 fifteenths of a pizza. Exactly the same thing. All right, I think we can squeeze the next problem kind of over here. Let's take a look at 2 ninths. And we have an equivalent fraction of that that has a 27 in the denominator. So what do we do? We can take this fraction 2 ninths. And we can multiply top and bottom by anything we want. But we know we're going to want to multiply by 3. Why are we doing that? Because 9 times 3 is 27. And so in the answer, we'll get our 27. And 2 times 3 on the top is 6. And so we're saying that the fraction 6 27ths is exactly the same as 2 ninths. All right, we're way past the halfway mark. Way past the halfway mark. Let's go back here and take a look at the following. Let's take a look at 5 6 and we're going to say that the answer is has an equivalent fraction of 30 in the denominator. So we have the fraction 5 6. We can multiply that fraction by anything we want. What are we going to choose? 
Uh, well, we want 30, so we're going to multiply times 5 here, because 6 times 5 is 30. And to keep everything balanced, we'll multiply by 5 over there. So 6 times 5 is 30, and then 5 times 5 is 25. So what we figured out is that 25 thirtieths is exactly the same as 5 sixth. All right, what about the fraction 8 elevenths? And over here, the new fraction, the equivalent fraction, has a 33 in the denominator. So we can take this fraction, multiply it by whatever we want, 8 elevenths. What are we going to multiply by? We're trying to get a 33 here, so we have to multiply by 3. And because of that, we're multiplying also the top by 3. So then on the top, 8 times 3 is 24. And on the bottom, 11 times 3 is 33. So what we're saying is that the fraction 24 33 is the same as 8 elevenths here. All right, I think we only have one more problem, and we're going to work it over here. Let's take a look at this problem over here. What about the problem 6 is equal to some fraction with a 4 on the bottom? Again, this looks different. It looks weird because there's a whole number here, but remember we already said any whole number, you can write it as a fraction. The whole number of 6 will be written as a fraction 6 over 1 because 6 divided by 1 is 6. So these are the same thing. And then your new fraction has a denominator of 4. So we can take this fraction of 6 over 1, and we can multiply it by anything we want. But we're going to choose to multiply it by 4 on the bottom and 4 on the top. Why? Because 1 times 4 is 4. That's what I'm shooting for. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 6 times 4 is 24. And so the answer is 24 fourths. Now, something I want to tell you is that we got an answer of 24 fourths. But remember, every fraction is the same thing. It means the same thing as division, right? So this 24 fourths means 24 divided by 4 in terms of what it means in division. What is 24 divided by 4? 24 divided by 4 is 6. So this is an equivalent fraction to this because when I divide it, I get 6. That's why it works as an answer as well. Just another way of thinking about it. So here we have conquered the idea of equivalent fractions, specifically finding equivalent fractions. You can multiply a fraction by any number you want as long as you do it to the top and to the bottom. When you do it like that, where it's balanced on the top and the bottom, then the fraction doesn't look the same anymore, but it means the same thing. And that's why these are equivalent. That's why these have equal signs in them. Because when I put an equal sign between these fractions, it means that they, that they represent the same amount of pizza or pie or whatever it is we're talking about. So I'd like you to go back through these, solve them all yourself. Follow me on the part two. We'll get a little more practice with equivalent fractions.